It's Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome back to Creative Chat Cafe. Hey, look, I'm not in my regular setup. Yep, I'm not supposed to be. I'm out traveling out in the New York City. But today, I wherever I am, I got to borrow this awesome mug. It says, keep calm and carry on and that's exactly what we're going to do next anyways welcome to creative chat cafe the talk show hangout that brings you guidance inspiration and results for all your marketing business development and leadership needs i am zav zand your host of the show and today we're going to have a, a leadership topic with two of my um, great guys over here and you've seen um, my regular co-host on the leadership topic scott anders and we also have leonard diana today joining me he's my awesome networking partner Woohoo! Around Connecticut, and I just want to take this opportunity to have these guys introduce themselves real quick. Um, Scott, go ahead. Hey, uh, thanks, Seth. Uh, good to to see you again, uh, even though we're mm -hmm. virtual. Um, yes. But no, it's uh, Scott Anders. I'm a uh, financial advisor with Eagle Strategies in New York Life. Been doing that for about 27 years. Uh, also, I'm a retired colonel. Uh, from uh, active duty and 20 years in the reserves. Uh, many of my uh, many of my years in New York Life was actually in management and training management. So uh, that's why uh, leadership has always been a uh, a favorite topic of mine for a variety of reasons. So that's that's me. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Welcome back, Leonard. Len, we call Leonard Len. So Len, go ahead. Hi guys. Um, hi Zach. I'm Len Diana. Welcome to Credit Chat Cafe. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm Len Diana. I'm with an Infinite Abundance of Wealth, Health, and Happiness. I'm a business coach, a relationships coach, and a Reiki practitioner. Thank you and welcome, welcome. Um, so I just wanted to, before we get started, just wanted to do um, the hashtag thing. You know, many people like, where do we watch Grady Chat Cafe and all that stuff? Do you have a hashtag? Yes, first of all, right here, right where my name is, that's the website that you would go to and watch Creative Chat Cafe every Wednesdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you ever Google us and want to get more information about Creative Chat Cafe, there's a hashtag that we use for the show. It's hashtag Creative Chat Cafe right here. Google searches and you'll definitely have a long list of information where you can watch our shows. You know, um, we're a lot on social media, so you'll never get bored finding us all over the web. So uh, back to what we're going to talk to you actually have three things or kind of three segments or approach that we do the show. Um, the first part of the you know show we will actually talk about uh, the topic which is today the topic is the importance of work working with a visionary leader. So um, one of the things that we're going to talk about is how do you become a great leader, you know visionary leaders, how different they are from the regular leader um, and then we will you know, give you some tips, tips on how you too can get started or maybe um, this is the information you need or the solution you need to get there. Um, and at the end, we will have an inspiration section where you know we will share you some resources or funny stuff that will make up the, um, the topic today. All right. Guys, so let's get started, right? So here's something that we all often hear. Um, can anyone turn an average Joe into a leader with proper training and education? I guess the more important um, question is, even with training and education, can anyone really lead others? It's very important, becoming a leader leader you know we can actually learn a process and all that stuff but leading others really leading others into becoming maybe successful people or great leaders that could be tricky so Scott with your awesome background in the military West Point trained what do you think about that in your personal experience do you really think an average Joe can become a leader with just education and training 
Well, that's a that's a great question, and, and that's the the multi million dollar question because that's why, <laughs> why so many of these uh, you know institutions exist. And so my you know, I'm a product of of West Point, four years academics and military instruction, which is based on the premise that you can take a young high school graduate and, and turn out a leader, you know, commission mm -hmm. them as an officer and, and do that. Uh, uh, and I've also been through a very micro training, which the Army calls its, its uh, premier leadership training, is Ranger School, which is a very intense, very physical, uh, very demanding uh, on, a, on a micro scale to train leaders. And both I'm of those. Quickly, John, I ask you a quick question. That I know. Um, yeah. you talk about Ranger, and if you know, for some of our audience who are not familiar with it, maybe we have an international audience. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but Ranger is a very specific, targeted train uh, training uh, because it's a special uh, force branch of the military. Is that correct? Yes. Just yeah. On that on that side note, it's a uh, it's a six week school taught down in, in Fort Benning and then they take you up into the foothills of uh, Dahlonega, Georgia and then down into the swamps uh, at uh, the Force Base. And it's really to, uh, it's very small unit leadership to train you to, uh, and they try to simulate the worst of the possible worst combat conditions. So no mm -hmm. food, uh, confusing instructions, no sleep, um, and, and demanding physical effort. And mm -hmm. and it really is you prove to yourself that you can operate and make good decisions in these most extreme circumstances. So when you get to Afghanistan or Vietnam or or the real thing, you're going. I, I, at least I'm glad I'm not in in Ranger School. Uh, <laughs> it's easier in real life. Um, so yes. that's that's what that is. But you know the the point I was trying to make earlier was that despite all of the best efforts to select in, to train, to weed out, to have super high standards. Um, it, uh, I've, I've seen people that graduate the academy, graduate ranger school that should not be there. I've seen people that fail uh, that should have made it. Um, now, for the vast majority, they do a good job. So it's, but it's, it's not a slam dunk. And I, and so I would answer that by saying, I think you can bring take raw talent a long way toward that, but there's still some intrinsic things like, you know, where they say leaders are born, not made. There is some, I think, personality style, some, I think you have to be a servant leader, you have to have some self-confidence, and you just can't fake that, you, you, and you just can't uh, train somebody uh, to do that. You can give them techniques, but if they don't have some intrinsic Personal values and skills. There, uh, no, no, no amount of training is going to fix that. Something you just said that kind of resonated with me because here's I'm thinking also. It doesn't have to even be uh, in the military with that kind of training. I'm just thinking the doctors, the the practitioners out there, maybe in ER. Not all doctors can be in ER. Like you said, they'll have the education, they'll have all the training, but at the end of the day, it's so specialized. It's very specialized training and education. But if you don't have the stomach for it, you don't have the heart and passion for um, trauma um, medicine, you will not belong in the ER. And that's one of the biggest things I think many of the leaders out there have a challenge uh, uh, you know, thinking that they all are leaders. Oh, you know, people elect me as leaders, but they don't necessarily know how, how to lead. And that's kind of scary at times. Very true. So, Len, let me let me ask you this, Len. Your background is kind of slightly different from Scott's military background, um, and Scott brought up some great points about how sometimes an average Joe goes through a rigorous education and training system and still cannot lead others. Um, and since you have been background, what is your personal experience with this? I mean, how can we help individuals? others is there something like getting started stepping stones to help them get there any thoughts about this yeah sure. um, actually Scott hit upon a, um, a great point um, which I totally agree with is self-confidence um, mm -hmm. to me you know you have to go you have to come from within first um, yeah. you know, you've got to know who you are um, and, and, and to me, it's a lot of um, goal making and, and why you want why you want something. Um, even even it's just even if it's just become a leader, um, 
that you need some kind of confidence. You need a lot of confidence to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, for me, some steps that I have gone through uh, to become more confident in myself, to become a, a better leader, is mm -hmm. again, goal making. You want to have your goals. You want, you want to know why you have your goals. Um, is it your family? And that's your overall big why. Is it your family? Is it your kids? Um, maybe a vacation spot. I don't know. Um, <laughs> something, yeah, you know, something that, that hits you right here right here in the heart. Um, then the other uh, other goals, you want to know your wives too. Why do you want that million dollars? Um, just because I want to be rich isn't going to do it. Um, you know, you, you want to know why. Uh, and that's how you actually get that. But you also want to be positive. You want to think, be, do, and emote positivity. Because uh, that all shoots out into the universe and, and actually everybody is affected with that. So that's I think you need that for leadership also. That's great. Um, and one more thing, you know, I, and I was just thinking about what we've been saying. Um, well, the topic today, the importance of working uh, with a visionary leader. Um, everybody wants to work with a visionary leader. And we all have some sort of a idol out there that we see as uh, or look up to as visionaries. Um, you know, I know I have mine, you know, some of the names that come through my plate of visionary leaders are people like Oprah. I mean, who doesn't like Oprah? Hello, you know, hey, <laughs> she's all over the place. Uh, but um, Scott, is there really someone that if, if there was an opportunity to work with or somebody that you know or you have been following, whom you would consider as a visionary leader? Because uh, maybe somebody that you want to be in a room with, train with, not just a leader, but a visionary leader. Do you have a story? I'm sure being in the West Point, we have quite a few stories to share. Well, it's uh, it's funny. I Although uh, my son was in was also in the military, and, and uh, I know a lot of people, and a lot of people talk about all their great, great military leaders. I, I probably have a, a longer list of people that uh, were totally. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, there was one, my all... first, uh, cavalry squadron commander, Colonel Harry, was. Uh, uh, he just came in with a with a again a confidence, uh, an attitude, and he. He really expected the best of people, and and he delivered. And, and the thing I like best about him is is he modeled the behavior. He he communicated it very well, modeled the behavior in terms of setting high standards for himself. And then he didn't just say, "I want you to do this." He would say, "Let me show you," and and he would drill you and drill you and drill you until it became second nature. Yeah. And so that was to me, uh, uh, in, instead of saying, "Well, you you should know you should know how to do all this stuff." Um, he was a very hands-on leader, and and therefore he he really got the most out of his men in his unit. So that was one. And then I've got a, a corporate example as well. Um, on the corporate example, um, uh, I've worked for New York Life for many years, and, and 23 of those was in uh, senior management uh, in our home office. And and our chairman of the board, uh, Cy Sternberger, uh, was a, a, a great guy. And um, very hard to work for. I mean, I've heard some stories of people about uh, how he would just tear them up. But from my perspective, uh, you know, when he took over, you know, well, the first thing he did was he and his vice chairman, they they took a, uh, I think two three days a week for the first six months and went out to all of the offices. New York Life's a nationwide company, uh, and would have uh, dinners or lunches with senior managers and senior agent representatives. And he would sit down and, and he'd start those, those meetings because I sat down on a couple of them and he'd say, I have no agenda. Um, you know, I'm going to take over this company. What do I need to know? And and he was very candid and very open. And, you know, his vice chairman was writing that down and, and he would challenge us. And if you said, you know, we, we need to get this guy back, you know, we need to do that. Yeah. He would say, tell me why. You know, is, is he really worth the money? Do we need to do that? Do we need to do that? And then at the end of that, he came out and, and he came up with a list of IOUs. Uh, Who and, is that? Uh, and, you know, IOU uh, response to these things. So he had a right. list of maybe 10, 10 things that crystallized all of the issues that were out there. Um, That's a great thing. And, and said, this is what I owe you. But, but in return, again, as a good leader, a visionary leader, said the whole purpose of this is to get buy-in and say, this is what you owe me once I get that done. 
And so I thought wow. that was a, a, a great thing because he, you know, he said, I'll deliver on my promises, but I need you to deliver on, on these promises. That so, is awesome. Um, that is awesome because I think not many leaders out there, this is the difference between the regular leader, I think, and also a visionary leader. It's so good to vision, with visionary leaders because they actually challenge you. They actually say, if I give you this, this is what you're going to give me back. So right. it's a two-way street. It's just not about, hey, it's all about me. I'll tell you what to do and you go do it. It's not about that. And you said, so beautifully that this gentleman actually, uh, all his actions, he mirror them. I mean, all his expectations are mirrored in his own actions on a daily basis, and that makes a whole lot of a difference because your team, play, uh, your teammates are watching you on a day to a uh, today basis, and you have to be that role model, and it gives people um, the reason to want to work with a visionary leader like you. Right. The um... Another thing he did was he, he sort of stood up against the tie. He was generally contrarian, whatever. Uh, and I've worked with some other very brilliant people, and, and they seem to say what everybody else is thinking um, is probably wrong. And <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm doing people's, helping people with investments, there's so much bad information out there. Generally, the herd is going in the wrong direction. Um, uh, but he was good to stand against the tide, and as a, you know, as a leading company in the industry and a leader of that, there was a whole lot of pressure from regulators and and uh, people to, to do different things and in the rating agencies back in the mid 90s to change the way we're organized as a company from mutual to a stock company you know, the, the technicalities are not important but everybody else did and there's only a handful of mutuals left and and re remaining in that that form of uh, ownership as a mutual company has really benefited us and enabled us to, to weather the financial storm so much better than these stock companies. Wow. Um, and then finally, I think, sort of, I wouldn't expect this, but uh, the other thing that that makes me think of Cy as a visionary leader is is the fact that five, five years before his retirement, and he didn't have to retire at 65, but he said, you know, at 65 I'm going to retire. He put together an extremely well thought out strategy to pick a successor for him and train that successor. So he, he found a handful of people that could meet that criteria, moved them around the company, gave them different responsibilities, winnowed the field. Um, and so when he, he passed the baton on, we had a competent manager. And, and, and the, the nice thing was, was it was a, it was not an old boy's choice thing. We, we had, a, you know, this was five years ago, a 42 year old uh, uh, guy come in as the uh, new chairman of the board for our company. Um, but he had wow. been vetted, he'd been trained, and six months into taking over, the financial crisis hits. Um, so that was a, it was an excellent job. And, you know, you see the, the flip side of that, and uh, regardless of your political persuasion, I yeah. just find it amazing that we have so many people in their 70s and 80s in Congress and, and in the Senate that think mm -hmm. that they can't be replaced. They they don't <laughs> have to push on. And and it's to me scary. that's yeah, you they that's getting so involved in thinking you're it, yeah. but really letting down your constituents by saying, let if you believe in this, you have an obligation to train people and continue that legacy as opposed yeah. to writing writing it down until you know, you, you die in the saddle. Oh my so, God, what you just said is, oh, thank you, Scott. Thank you so much because you really put things into perspective with what you just said, you know. Um, really, people sometimes, especially leaders, you know, in their high-ranking positions, they really sometimes think that, hey, I mean, I'm going to be here for a long time. But they forget that the next gen are sometimes the better leaders and they have to give way, make way for them to shine too. Um, and just to kind of sum up what I'm really hearing from just that story which I think is really awesome we all need that kind of story all the time I think the way you you tell that story I'm hearing and I'm already learning that how a visionary leader should actually be or what this person should be like is um, I think four points that came up from that conversation, from that story is, you know, I, I hear that they have to have high standards and practices, those standards in their daily actions. You can't just say, go do this and not do it yourself. And you have to expect the same performance from your team members. Um, the second of all, I hear that, you know, 
visual leaders are people who often stand, stand against the type. They, they're not complacent about anything, so they want to think outside the box. And um, the third thing I hear, it, it's something about communicate your message and expectations often and clearly to your team. Get your team members to be a part of your brainstorming sessions um, and actually get them involved in some of the decision making of the company because that's what true visionary leaders do do because it's just not all about them. It's not in their head. And the fourth thing I hear, Scott, if, I mean, you, like you said, the gentleman doesn't have to leave at 60 some year old, but um, at, at, uh, age, but it's great to have an exit strategy that would actually groom your, you know, the, the person who's actually going to take over uh, when you leave. And that's an awesome point. What about you, Lent? Is there somebody that you, um, have been following a leader that you really enjoy um is there some someone like there that you actually follow um more recently i've been following mr branson from the virgin group tell uh, me a little bit more about what you like about this gentleman yeah he uh well obviously you know he's multi-billion billionaire and right owns the world uh, basically. Yes. <laughs> but um but he's to me what i found interesting about him is that it's not just about him. Um, he actually, he's got a lot of um, great employees that work with him and enjoy working with them. It's like, he, you know, he'll work with them and he, even the little quote, unquote, peons, um, you know, he'll, he'll take time and, and, and enjoy them. And from what I just heard now, he's giving all of his staff, everybody, all his employees, um, unlimited vacation time. Wow, uh, we yeah. all gave you some of that. Oh, yeah. darn! <laughs> um, but he's—I mean, he, he does a lot for charity. He just—he just does so much, and it's just so visionary that he is. Because he's not—he's just not looking one step ahead. He's looking way into the future. Um, and so, you know, I—I've been keeping my eyes on him for a short time now. I just found out. I just find keep on finding more good things about him. He's just, That's you know, really open awesome. and I find it great that everybody has some sort of a role model to follow, and I think the young generation they need to understand that too. And it's great that we can sometimes bring this information to our folks, business folks out there. From my personal experience, uh, what I've learned and. The people that the visual leaders that I like to work with, and I've seen in through my own journey in business, the visual leaders that um, breathe passion into everything they do, that's like the greatest leaders because they're passionate about what they do. They don't wait for others to tell them what to do. They take it upon themselves to be the movers and shakers, and you know, um, with that passion, they do whatever it takes to champion their work and the causes they support. That's some some great, great passion that goes on uh, uh, in the Visionary Leaders uh, workbook, you know. Um, and um, really, they don't wait for things to happen. But Scott, if there were some tips from your end to kind of share with our audience on how to become um, a visionary leader, what would you say? Um. You know, again, there's. I, I think you know the whole topic of this is is you have to have a vision, and as as Lynn was sharing, is that you know, uh, you know, without a vision, nothing goes anywhere. Um, so so that's that's the the key thing. Uh, you've got to start with a vision, um, mm. and and I think you you have to inspire others to that vision. So it, it doesn't yeah. uh, doesn't do you any good just to have a brilliant idea if you can't mm -hmm. communicate and inspire. Um, and so that that's that communication piece, that talking and enlisting mm -hmm. others in the cause by being open, candid, and and truly listening, and not just yeah. telling. Um, I think you've got to challenge the process. Is if if you're going to do something different, uh, uh, that means standing against the tide. That that means seeing the same set of problems, same set of facts that everybody else does, and looking at it a different way, and and seeing a different outcome. So challenging the process, I think, is important. Um, and yeah. then you have to enable others to act, and you have to be able to uh, uh, give people the tools and pass them on, uh, and that's either hands-on training or giving people the resources. In, in that case, story I told you, that was the IOU. I'll give you these, 
but then I need yeah. to return. So giving people the tools, and then finally, um, you know, having a culture. And as as uh, Lynn uh, pointed out, you know, that, that vacation thing. I mean, that's that sounds awesome. Yes. Uh, that yeah. creates a culture where I trust you to be respectful of of the time. And and you know, I I, I think for all of my management years, I never took all the vacation I was entitled to, uh, just because there was more of that feeling of getting the mission done. But that was a culture that was that made things uh, work better. And that was the grease that that and or leaven or whatever you got that that made the organization work. Ben, what about you? What are your tips for our audience? You know, um, if they want to work with visionary leaders or they want to become one. Again, um, role making and, and clarity is is probably number one. Building relationships, I think, is is very is very much needed. Um, and it's not, I'm not talking love relationships. I'm talking about Business relationships, um, whether it's your your vendors, your employees, uh, your colleagues, it, it doesn't matter. Um, your community, you want to build relationships with people, uh, and, and that builds up confidence. You want inspiration and motivation, uh, and you want to be grateful and appreciative of everything that comes your way. That's great. Um, that's true. Everybody needs to first understand it starts with you so before you become a leader and lead others it starts with you so kind of fix yourself first <laughs> you know you actually found this this I call it an inspirational cartoon because it actually supports exactly what thought you mentioned earlier in the show so I'm gonna kind of share with everybody um, this this particular cartoon that I found and here it is so we can see Dilbert's in Dil Dilbert's office, I think, working. So this probably this could be his salesperson and say sales dropping or sales leader. Sales are dropping like a rock. Our plan is to invent some sort of doohickey that everyone wants to buy. And he goes like, okay, the visionary leadership work is done. How long will you take care of will your part take? Isn't that amazing, Scott? Like what you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, people just do do uh, stuff on their own. They don't bring uh, members of their team to play with them. And then let me just kind of uh, go off here, off the screen. Yeah, they don't play with other people. They just do their part, and then they call themselves leaders. And then they go like, okay, I'll pass the, bat uh, the baton on to you. Um, how long will it take you to do this? No, I owe you, or you owe me. You know, yeah. it's just, it's just funny because I found that, and I'm like, oh my god, doesn't that clearly show the difference between um, a, you know, maybe like a uh, boss set mentality versus a leader? So what, what do you think, Scott? What good is leadership? This is what a visionary leader looks like. <laughs> What do you think? Yeah, no, that's that that that's a tough one. And, and many times when I'm mentoring or coaching somebody, I mean, a lot of it's you're trying to to coach up, where you're you're trying yeah. to help have help a, a senior employee or or you know a, a client deal with a problem, where it's their their boss is all about themselves because they have the title, but they don't have the skill sets and they don't understand um, how to lead. Um, yeah. And what they're doing is is uh, not not helping, so that's always a difficult uh, situation when you're in that, and, and that mm -hmm. takes maturity to uh, um, to that overcome experience. that. I mean, just for inspiration, just just to that note, I, I always uh, I always love uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits book, and and um, that mm -hmm. whole model that he has. Uh, you know, the first three steps of the Seven Habits are to get from dependent to independent, um, and that's really taking care of yourself. The 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 next four habits are really um, uh, growing from independence to interdependence, and that's really leadership, and that's what leaders do, and, and that's those those habits are thinking win-win, um, thinking how you can win, I can win, we both can win as we achieve something, not win-lose. Uh, yeah. Thinking that the, the second, uh, or that I guess it's the that's the fourth habit, and the fifth habit is uh, Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Again, that's that's active listening. That's understanding that your team may be smarter than you. Um, building yeah. the team, having that open culture, uh, creativity uh, that that enhances your success. Uh, and it's not about telling; it's about listening. And then the the sixth habit is synergize, and that's one plus one equals three. 
that's really having that vision that you see more, there's more possible um, uh, by bringing in collaboration, sort of like we're talking about here and sharing ideas. There's the more you give, the more you get. And then the, the, the seventh habit is center is, is sharpen the saw, which is just always, always be a student of what you're doing. Uh, so every morning, uh, in addition to maybe some spiritual stuff, you're, you're, you're sharpening the saw, you're reading something. If you're a leader, you should be reading stuff about leadership. If you're you know, a financial advisor, you should be you know, reading more about financial stuff. But you should always be in a learning process because I think when you quit learning and you think you got it all, uh, that's when you're really are, are decaying. If you're not growing, you're, you're decaying. It's true. I think when it comes to learning, you never stop learning. No matter what age, you continue to learn on a day-to-day -day basis because I have every day there's something that we're learning and new things. New things are coming up every day, so we, we, de we don't just don't stop learning. Um, and I really, really agree that you have to continue to sharpen this all. <laughs> we go um, send it, you know, uh, before I get the guys here to share their information and how you can get. I'm just going to quickly show you how you can actually get more information and watch our shows. Um, let me try to share my screen here. I'm having a problem with getting my website up, but I'm just going to talk so that I can put it <laughs> on my screen later. So um, you can actually go to our website. Uh, it's called um, entrepreneursetsore.com, and you can actually go to um, www.entrepreneursetsore.com, go to the uh, link, and then there is a tab that says Watch Hangouts, and there's a Creative Chat Cafe tab, and you can watch all our shows there. And then you can also go to our YouTube channel, <clears throat> and this is our YouTube channel. Go to our YouTube channel, Entrepreneur Set Store, and we actually have a list here that's called Creative Chat Cafe. Now we're creating a chat cafe community on Google Plus where we post post show conversations and definitely on the left tab here you can introduce yourself, make announcements. We would love to hear what you do, share your thoughts and opinions and suggestions, your expertise. So come join us and uh, get into the conversation. Um, so before we go, let's get Scott and Len to share their information. Scott, so if our audience out there want to get in touch with you because maybe they want to learn a little bit more about what you do and um, your story at West Point. How do you want them to connect with you and where can they find you? Great. Um, I, I believe I can't I can't see this fine print, but I believe uh, uh, below my name it, uh, it it says the website. So it's uh, uh, www.scottanders.com. That's my website, and that, that has my email address, and uh, I believe my phone number is on there as well. But that's probably the easiest way to learn a little bit more about me, some of the uh, 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 services and uh, solutions that I can provide. Uh, but it would be happy to talk to anybody about uh, either uh, leadership topics or if they, have, uh, they need help with their uh, financial situation, take a, a look at where they are and where they want to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Happy to chat with them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Um, Len, um, how about you, Len? I know um, uh, you're pretty new to the show, and we will also have your information on our blog page, Creative Track Cafe, on our website so that they also can connect with you. But just go ahead and tell everybody how you can connect with, uh, they can connect with you and your information, your website, and all that great stuff. Sure. Website is www lmdwealthhealthhappiness.net. Uh, my email address is infiniteabundance at gmail.com. Uh, and my phone number is 860-593-5257. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, before we go, again, you can watch Pretty Chat Cafe on entrepreneurs.store.com. And here's our hashtag again. Thank you for joining us today. Um, and uh, thank you, Len. Thank, thank you, Scott. We'll see you at the next one um, before we go. Have a great day. Have a creative and productive Have um, a great session wherever you are. Think about being a great leader. And we'll see you at the next Creative Check Cafe. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Thanks, Steph.